Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna take a more pragmatic approach to trying to figure out when could a correction occur. We're just going to be using historical data and historical trends. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. So recently, Bitcoin has been rallying. We're approaching 16K. It remains to be seen if we will rally above this in the short term. I'm sure uh, eventually we will, uh, whether it's in the short term or not is, is somewhat moot. But if we if we take a look at the 20 week moving average and look at historically speaking at this phase of the market cycle, what was the time frame between tests of the 20 week moving average? So that's what we're going to look at. And, and maybe during this video, we'll see Bitcoin go over 16K. Um, I'm not I'm not sure right now, but let's just go ahead and look at the 20 weeks. So if we go back and look during the last market cycle, we first know if you're new to the channel, we know that this is our support band during a bull market. But the more important thing is to figure out, OK, well, we know we had these corrections. We know we had 40 percent corrections, 20 percent corrections, et cetera, that took us to the 20 week moving average or the 21 week EMA, if you prefer. Now, the, the real question, of course, is how long of a period of time were we above this level before retesting it? And how much higher did the price go in that time frame? So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So the first time we moved above the 20 week moving average was the week of October 12th of 2015. This was the last market cycle. During that time, the price of Bitcoin increased approximately 36% when we next test the 20 week over around 13 weeks or so, approximately 30, maybe 37, 38%. So this was the first, uh, the first move, which arguably we've already done that because as we, as we can see over here, this first move was on April 20th, the week of April 20th. And in this situation, we tested it 18 weeks later, maybe 19 weeks later at a 26% move up. Okay, so the first one was 38% move over 13 weeks. This one was a 27% move over 19 weeks. Following this move, what happened? What were our subsequent tests and what was the time between them? Well, one interesting thing is we actually spent a lot more time testing the 20 week on our first test during the last market cycle than we did this market cycle. The last market cycle, we tested it for approximately four months or so before breaking back up. But the real question is, okay, once we left the 20 week, when did we revisit it and how high had the price of Bitcoin gone? You can see here it had gone up around 29% over 10 weeks. So this was one test. When we left it again, actually, let me um, let me let me zoom in here so we can actually measure it very, very accurately. I, I sort of did this on the stream the other day, uh, but I want to actually get these as accurate as possible. OK, so this one was um, sorry. So this one here was a from from testing the 20 week. It was just below maybe around a 30 percent move. Yeah, we had a wick below. I don't think wicks really count. But if you just take it up to where the 20 week moving average was approximately 29 percent over 10 or 11 weeks. Um, and then in the next instance, we left it here and we retested it about 12 weeks later and the price had increased 20 percent. From here, we tested it nine weeks later and the price had increased 24%. So you can see that w there's a cluster, at least in the last market cycle, of corrections that take place back to the 20 week, approximately 10 weeks after we left it. So you could argue maybe approximately two and a half months or so. Um, we do anticipate this cycle being different. I do not think that things will play out exactly the way they did last time. If we go, as we get later into the cycle, the time between test, got a little bit, uh, this one got a little bit larger, or sorry, the, the price increased about 100% between tests, and then this one here increased around 60%. The final one increased 240% or so, but this is where we finally broke it, um, and it was the bad news bears for a while. You can see that one took 20 weeks or so. So let's take a look back over here and say, well, let's be pragmatic. I mean, obviously, we're all here to make money. We also want to see Bitcoin just continue to go up and up and up. Uh, and it could, right? Where any 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 time, any time of the year, Bitcoin can always go into a a bubble. Uh, this is, you know, we we even saw this in the summer of of 2019. We we bubbled all the way up at 14k, and then we came all the way back down to 30 3800 3900 dollars. So we know that short term bubbles can exist. 
of course, a lot of that would beg the question, well, are we going to come back down to these levels or not? Um, or are we, are we essentially moving on up from here with some corrections along the way? Well, let's take a look at what happened in this cycle. So, so far, we had approximately a 18-week break from testing the 20-week that moved up 26%. Now, this is the one we're currently in. So we left it here, arguably, and we, we're currently in our fifth week, and the price has moved up 47%. If you look at the last cycle, remember our first cluster of tests at the 20-week, they were separated by approximately two and a half months, and they varied by 20% up to 30% price increase of Bitcoin when it retested the 20-week approximately 10 weeks later. So let's suppose that we were to do the same thing. Let's suppose we retest the 20 week, let's just say 10 weeks after we left it. Well, that would put us in mid-December, okay? Again, I don't know if this is gonna happen. This would just be if we if we have some type of repetition from the last cycle. This would put us in mid-December. And let's be a little bit uh, more pragmatic as well and say, okay, well, what if it's a 30% move up that was similar to the last cycle? It could also be a 20% move up, which we also saw early last cycle. This could put us somewhere between retesting, you know, 12.5 up to 13.5. Well, why does this make sense, right? It, will the 20 week moving average be at 12.5 to 13.5 in a month? Is this possible? Well, of course it's possible because if we take a look at the 20 week moving average, we see that it's currently at 11,452, okay? A week ago, however, the 20 week moving average was around $11,000. And a week before that, it was less than 11,000 at around 10,800. So we know the 20 week moving average is moving up quickly because the price has been moving up quickly. If we assume that it's moving up by approximately, let's say 300, $400 a week, then over four weeks, that's going to be between 1200 to um, $1,600, depending on exactly how much it's moving up. And since the current 20 week moving average is at 11.5, approximately just shy of 11.5, if we add just say approximately you know, $1,200 to $1,600, we could get in that ballpark around 13K, plus or minus a few hundred dollars. So this would, this would involve a scenario where the, pri the 20 week moving average continues to move up quickly over, over the next few weeks. And then maybe it would start to, to, to level, sorry, maybe it would start to level off a bit if the price does correct back down to in fact test the, the 20 week moving average again. So you could see something like that. And the only reason this would start to curve back is if this rally does not continue. Um, if this rally were to pull back to the 20 week, then we would see something similar uh, as we have seen in prior cycles. We would see approximately 10 weeks um, or so. This would actually be 13 weeks the way I drew it. Uh, sorry, I should draw it from, from the beginning of, or sorry, from when we left the 20 week. So right here, it would prox approximately be nine, 10 weeks, and you can see between maybe 20 to 30%. Again, we're not saying this has to happen. We just want to be prepared for, for, the, for the chance that it does because we did see t regular tests of the 20 week moving average early on in the market cycle that increased in price, the, the valuation of Bitcoin increased in price during that time period by about 20 to 30%. So we left the 20 week moving average at around $10,000. So a 25% move up would obviously put us at 12.5 thousand. If we were to go up say 30%, it might put us at 13,000. But this is just, uh, just to, to keep people a little bit down to earth, to not get too uh, excited. Now, if Bitcoin does something crazy and, and, and continues on, on moving up, then the 20 week moving average will, will move up even quicker. And then, and then we'll, have to, we'll have to assess what's going on in the event that that happens, okay? Because this would this would be a pretty drastic move. The 20-week moving average would move up quickly. And then our, our moving target for our bull market support will, will obviously be changing quite quickly. Now, there's always the chance we don't hold the 20-week and we have to keep this in the back of our mind. There's no free lunch here. Of course, we all hope, it, hope it's gonna hold. Maybe we think it's gonna hold, but it doesn't mean that it will hold. Now, uh, but I, I do think that we, you know there, there will be many tests of the 20 week moving average during this market cycle, whether we go back and test it now and meet it at 13K or if say Bitcoin rallies to 17 or 18K and then retest the 20 week at, at say 14K or 15K, you know, this is somewhat irrelevant because I, I cannot tell you what will happen in the short term, but I just want people to, people to be aware that we will see several tests of the 20 week moving average this market cycle 
and and essentially it is just par for the course. Now, does this make sense? Uh, could we see this happening from just like a, a, a structure point of view? So we know that Bitcoin definitely does not need to respect these imaginary lines, right? It does not need to respect them. In fact, there's been many times in the past where you could draw these, these, these lines and it might respect it for a while, but eventually it will break out. Um, but you can see this, you know, this general, this general trend of, of Bitcoin and the price over the last several months, this starting back in, in April. And what you see is, you know, move to the top and then a move to the bottom and then a move to the top and then a move to the bottom. And now we've moved back to the top. Now, the, the, the issue I generally have with trend lines, of course, is how easily you can re re uh, redraw them, right? I mean, you could have you could have drawn this such that it looks like this, which I'm sure I've done in the past, right? And uh, speculating that the top would be here as opposed to all the way you know, up here. I, I think no matter how you slice it, Bitcoin has really, uh, it's, it's really overblown right now in terms of its short-term uh, price valuation going from 10,000 to, to 15,000 in, in such a short period of time. While it's certainly exciting, you know, we want to see, we want to see something sustainable, of course. So it would be nice at some point to, to start moving sideways or even, even dip back down. And if we were to dip back down that you can see, in fact, it would be in line with the 20 week moving average. This could be, you know, at 12.5, if it were to go down quicker, if it were to take a little bit longer, maybe, you know, maybe it would be around 13 K or something like that. I understand everyone's excited. Everyone wants to see Bitcoin go to 100K in the short term, but let's just be, we'll, we'll be ready in the event that happens, but let's also be a bit more pragmatic and say, you know what? We've seen this before. We've seen these rallies. If it pulls back, it will just simply be business as usual and nothing more, right? Even in the event of a, of a move back down to, to those levels, it's still business as usual. But we'll, we'll be here every step of the way. We'll see if Bitcoin continues to rally from these levels. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. We also do have the premium list, which you can find a link to in the description below into the cryptoverse.com. You get access to weekly premium reports, weekly videos, a risk dashboard, which is what I use to trade, as well as a Telegram alerts channel, a private Telegram chat room, and some of the trading view indicators that I've made. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Please subscribe, help me get to 50,000 subscribers, and I'll see you next time. Bye.